Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for joining CDNIS Nursery Webinar. I'm Teresa Lee, the Deputy Head of Admissions from CDNIS. Founded in 1991 and be one, being one of the leading international schools in Hong Kong for over three decades, we are looking for the expansion of our school to continue with our school mission to provide continuous quality education yeah. as one of the best international schools in Hong Kong. Starting from the school year 24 and 25, the school will introduce a new bilingual two-year-old nursery program at our extended campus at the south side, along with our highly popular bilingual half-day earlier years one program for three-year-old students. Next. Let me introduce our today's webinar speakers. We are happy to invite Dr. Will Chan, our Senior Director of Special Projects. He will walk, talk about the overview of bilingual education in early childhood. Mr. Liv Erickson, our lower school principal, will give you an overview of CDNIS bilingual program from UI1 to grade five. Thereafter, Ms. Emily Pong, our admissions director will walk you through the admissions of the nursery program. After our senior leadership team's presentations, we will have a Q&A section to answer your questions. You may wish to type in your questions either in English or Chinese during the webinar. So now, let's kickstart our webinar. Good morning, Dr. Will. Thank you very much to be our speaker of today's webinar. Over to you. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you, Teresa. Good morning, everybody. I'm uh, absolutely thrilled to be a part of this uh, program and to be involved with uh, CNIS's growing family uh, and school community. I've been in education for over 45 years, uh, both here in Hong Kong International Schools uh, local schools, as well as serving as principal in the United States schools. And I've had the privilege to work with thousands of amazing families and students. And perhaps one of the most uh, defining factors, I believe, uh, for student success is the student's ability to, to be conversationally fluent, uh, to have the ability to express themselves uh, clearly, succinctly, explicitly, as well as able to request and share their, their thoughts and their ideas, uh, and to also uh, seek needs, whatever they uh, may have to need at that particular point, but in a very clear and confident manner. The ability to confidently um, express themselves is something that underscores a child's ability to move forward in life and be successful. As the world rapidly shrinks, uh, the need to be conversationally fluent in multiple languages becomes even more needed and urgent. Um, next, please, Kathy. But perhaps bilingualism became more important to me as I became a new year yeah, this year. So it has a has greater influence, it's greater impact, and immediate, immediate need. So let me uh, go ahead and explain, talk a little bit about, share my ideas about bilingual education with you. Next, please. Bilingual education is oftentimes confused and un not really well understood by, by many parents, causing confusion. And there are perhaps several misconceptions and, and myths. Oh, thank you, sorry. Okay, thank you. Parents ask, is it really beneficial? And we're having some technical issues here, thank you. Uh, parents are asking, is this really beneficial for, for my son or daughter? Or may it even cause harm to my child's growth? There are perhaps three most common misconceptions I'd like to share with you. Next, Kathy. The first one is, can bilingualism cause confusion in children? Very common, I've, I've had parents come up to me and ask me this all, often. And I oftentimes a parent would measure this as they listen to the children using two languages, but code mixing, uh, blending words from both, uh, but from both languages. And I, I have to confess, I do the same thing. I think I said the other night, uh, ho and joy, 
you know, so is code mixing in, in relevant terms. But I think rather than seeing this as a deficit, the research shows that this is really a demonstrated strength of the child as it shows fluidity of language skills, flexibility of reason. But maybe for me, the most important is the child understands the purpose of the language to communicate. And so they borrow words, appropriate words, from one culture to another to express themselves. It also gives children greater flexibility, resourcefulness, and nimbleness in thinking and reasoning. Next, Kathleen. Time Magazine in 2013 dedicated an issue uh, about this whole issue, uh, this whole domain of bilingualism. And what they have found is that a bilingual education platform enhances the brain's executive functions. So what is that? What is, is that really? It's about memory. It's about cognitive flexibility or thinking think flexibly. And it can also assist children to become more self-regulated and controlled. Next, please. Misconception number two, my child's too young to understand multiple languages. He has enough trouble with one language. Many parents have told me this before as they want to develop a strong mother tongue base before engaging in the second language education. But the research does not support this. The, the professionals around language acquisition all agree that the earlier a child gets access to bilingual or multilingual environment, the better. They learn easier. They call these simultaneous bilinguals, children who learn simultaneous languages from birth. These children tend to have better accents, a more diversified vocabulary in both languages, by the way, higher grammatical proficiency and skill, great skill in real-time language processing. Next, please, Kathy. Lastly, many parents have, are concerned that a multilingual environment can perhaps cause language delays or even learning delays. And parents typically will measure this when they compare a monolingual child versus a bilingual or multilingual child. And they use something called vocabulary count. How many words do they actually know? What the researchers will tell us here is the vocabulary count is actually the same or even greater, but certainly more diversified. In a bilingual educate in a bilingual uh, language learner, which demonstrates what they call fluidity of language, the ability to go back and forth to use both languages in everyday life. Next, please. So, what do we know? First of all, we know that there are more bilingual and multilingual people in the world than monolingual, and the trend is growing. We also know that children at very early ages, between zero and five their brain growth is phenomenal. They grow the fastest and develop the greatest during this period of time. We also know that bilingual and multilingualism is more than just academics. It's actually ability to effectively and confidently use one more than one language in everyday life for survival. It's a way of living. Thus, it has social and cultural impact. The last piece is that the family or the environmental factors can powerfully shape a child's learning, attitude, and character within its domain. Next, Kathy. So the CDS vision, we wanted to begin and build from a purpose. And we started with the ability to function in everyday life using two or more languages with confidence and flexibility. Thus, our vision or our purpose for this program is for children to gain conversational fluency. Next, please. Understanding that, we dove into the research and the theory and practices and asked ourselves, what would an ideal early years bilingual program look like? What would be the outcomes? What would be the strategies? What would be the environment, the approach? Next, please. We base our model on Schumann and Cashin, which are, <clears throat> excuse me, seminal uh, theorists in language acquisition in early years. And we learn that there are six critical elements. I like to highlight uh, some of these uh, that are most, uh, we believe are very important or critical in a successful 
bilingual program. Next, please. The first one is input. The availability of robust quality and purposeful language input throughout the entire day is perhaps the minimal condition of a successful bilingual program. We wanna focus on what we call meaningful interaction in the new language, or some people call it natural communication, where we would pr prioritize expression and understanding. So having children immersed in quality, purposeful language all day throughout the day at school here is an, is an option or an opportunity for them to gain greater insights in the language nuances. Next, please. Following input, we wanna make sure that the language we use is connected and it's not out of the blue. It must be relevant, it must be suitable and purposeful. This gives children the power to understand the meaning and purpose of the language. Whether the children are engaged in recess time or art or choice or science or even toilet time, community time, the goal is for us to structure our input of language to build connections to the task. When it's connected this way, it often inspires greater desire and motivation for young learners to pick up the functionality of the language. It becomes real for them. Next, Kathy. Lastly, the third one is attitude. Attitude can underscore a child's willingness to engage in the learning or not. Our goal is to create a very positive, fun, stress-free bilingual learning environment with the vision to engage children in a normal culture, not school culture, but a normal life culture of freely used multiple language that is relevant and open. We also want to focus on expression and understanding rather than grammatical form, which will greatly enhance the purpose of communicating. Next, Kathy. So how do we structure this in a school setting? We, we will build a purposeful built environment strictly for two and three year olds with a community of learners, a small community of learners uh, led by trained, professionally trained adults in small classrooms. We'll also embrace this in a robust and contiguous dual language culture where the free flow of both languages contiguous. It goes back and forth, irrespective of function and task. It's led by early years trained PYP and dual language professionals. Our goal is to also focus on school readiness, child development, and receptive language acquisition throughout the three throughout the three hours of the school program. Next, please. So, what's that look like? Well, first of all. It's a purposeful built environment for young learners. This in itself is very exciting. We are extending our program to three hours rather than the current two and a half hours to give us greater time and access to language. The dual language will be immersive and contiguous through the whole environment of school day. We will build deliberate and purposeful activities with oversight and teacher engagement. We want to capture every opportunity to allow kids to probe, to push, to facilitate their language readiness. And lastly, our priority of school readiness, language acquisition, and early years develop will be the main core of our school. Next, please. So what does that look like? Here's a draft of what a nursery program day could look like, some of the activities here. These are very typical. But one of the things that we know is that the family and environmental factors can make a big difference. Teachers' presence can make a big difference. And so what we are focusing on is capturing every minute of the school day that were with us, the three hours there, and ensuring that teachers are there to either direct or to guide a child's learning through the day with appropriate and integrated language skills. This is what we're looking for. In closing, the CNS began this journey with our purpose and vision of early years conversational fluency. However, I have to admit that I'm a bit selfish. And this actually began with the vision of my grandson. Next, please. <laughs> okay. 
he is the purpose of the energy involved and the efforts involved to ensure that they have a great future ahead of them. It's in their hands. Thank you very much for listening and uh, we'll talk to you later during Q&A. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wu's sharing, and I'm sure parents are now having more understanding about the advantages of early childhood bilingual education. The next speaker is our lower skill principal, Mr. Liv Erickson. Good morning, Liv, and thank you for sharing current CDNIS bilingual program across EY1 to grade 5 this morning. Over to you now, Liv. Thank you, Teresa, and good morning, everyone. And uh, thank you, Dr. Chan. It's always so exciting to hear um, about the, the new addition of our nursery program and bilingualism as a whole. Uh, this morning, I'm gonna give you a brief overview about where we've come from and where we currently are with our program. And um, please continue to ask questions through the chat uh, function as well. Next slide, please. So in 2021, 2022, uh, the board made a decision that we would introduce a bilingual program here at CDNIS. And uh, we launched that last year with our early years one and our early years two classes. Um, and we kept one international track as well, since this was a new pilot program for us last year. After the success of that program, we rolled it up to our prep class this year and we maintain the international track, but already knew that due to the popularity and the success of our bilingual program, that we will no longer have the international track starting next year. So each consecutive year, uh, we are going to roll it out to a new grade level. So next year for 2024, 2025 academic year, we will roll it up into our grade one classes. So we'll have EY1, EY2, prep, and uh, grade one, all in our bilingual program. Our international program will continue with the grades above that. And then the following year, we'll roll it up to grade two until 2028, 2029, when our entire lower school will be part of the bilingual program. And we're really looking forward to that time when all of our classes can experience and benefit from a full bilingual program here at CDNIS. Next slide, please. Now, our program is based on an immersion model. So the students will have two homeroom teachers, an English speaking homeroom teacher and a Chinese speaking homeroom teacher. And they will alternate between those two classrooms on different days. We have a six day um, timetable. That doesn't mean that we go to school on Saturday. Um, it rotates between the days of the week and it starts back on Monday, as you can see. And the reason we've done a six day a cycle is so that we have more room within the curriculum to spread our specialist class out, classes out. Instead of just five days, we have six to spread them out. We're able to block more back-to-back uh, -back lessons so that students can dive deeper into their learning without having to rush from one specialist class to another, and they have more time in their homerooms. And finally, um, just for practicalities, often holidays fall on a Monday or a Friday, and they don't miss the same classes all the time with the rotation of a six-day timetable. So here you can see a sample of what it would look like for a child. On a day one, they would go to their English class, and the teacher has English um, language posters up in, their in the room, English books. It is English world the moment they walk through that door. And um, the following day, they will go to their Chinese class, which is a different classroom. And just like the English, it's Chinese world. And we have uh, Chinese language, Chinese books. And the students know the moment that they move into that classroom that they're switching between the English language and the Chinese language. Next slide, please. We are extremely proud. Uh, last year was our pilot year. And um, with all pilots and programs, we wanna see how we're doing and how we can improve. And this is something we will continue doing with our bilingual rollout as well. But last year, 96% of our parents who were in the bilingual program marked as satisfied or highly satisfied with our program so far. So uh, we're very proud to uh, toot our own horn here and say that the overall satisfaction they were feeling informed. Uh, they felt that they had enough Chinese and English resources um, as well. So with a 96% uh, 
um, satisfaction rate. We hope to maintain that as we continue to roll out our program each year. Next slide, please. Now in EY1 and EY2, our curriculum is based mainly on development matters for English language. And then we've also drawn upon the Hong Kong Kindergarten Guide. And we are a full IB school from EY1 all the way up to uh, uh, grade five. And then we are an IB school into transition years and the diploma program as well. We have five different domains within our early years curriculum, social emotional development, the physical development, the English language development, the Chinese Mandarin language development, and then the cognitive development of numeracy, science, social studies, and arts and creativity. They will experience all of their subjects in both languages except English language and Chinese language lessons, which will be standalone. Next slide, please. Now, once you move into prep uh, to grade five, our curriculum continues to be based in the IB PYP, the primary years program, and is rooted in Ontario standards. So the backbone of our curriculum is um, the Ontario standards, but with that, we have enhanced it with our units of inquiry that run throughout the PYP. For you as parents, um, you might be interested, what does that look like for uh, a learning journey? If I join a nursery, what is that going to look like in grade one? What will that look like in grade three and so on? On our public website, you can now access um, this information. So you can click on our public website, click on academics. You can select a subject area such as English or math. And then you can see there's a snapshot there for early years, you can see what the standards, um, a brief overview, it's not the detailed standard, but a brief overview of what it would look like. And you can also see what it would look like for grades one to 10. So you can see that learning journey for where your child would be going. Next slide, please. And with that, I'd like to introduce uh, Miss Emily Pong, our Director of Admissions. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Lee's presentation that gives us more information on UI1 to grade 5 curriculum. Again, if you want to know more details about our comprehensive curriculum across various grade levels, please surf on our website for more details. Now, I would like to introduce our Director of Admissions in CDNIS, Ms. Emily Park. She will walk you through the nursery admissions in our school. Over to you, Emily. Thank you, Teresa. Hello, everyone. This is Emily Pong, Director of Admissions at CDNIS. It's my pleasure to meet you here and to provide you admissions information for our bilingual half-day nursery program. Starting the school year of 24-25 and onwards, all our nursery and early years one half-day, both AM and PM classes, will be stationed at our extended campus at the south side in Wong Chok Hang, which is right above the Wong Chok Hang MTL station. So for the bilingual nursery program, uh, here are the numbers of intake. We totally have eight classes, so four in the morning and four in the afternoon with three hours per day. And there are totally 60 seats in the morning 60 seats in the afternoon with 15 students per class. Though that adds a total of 120 seats for new intakes. Well, this creates a golden opportunity for you to join the school community in the forthcoming school year. And may I emphasize it's not only on nursery classes, for the UI1 classes as well, it's also there are 120 seats available for the same. So next year is a golden opportunity for your family. So what is the tentative class time or the, uh, the class time that we have scheduled? For the AM class, we start at eight o'clock and finish by 11 o'clock AM. For the afternoon class, we start at 12.30 and finish by 3.30 in the afternoon. So I'm happy to show you the floor plan of our extended campus here. 
is featuring a spacious learning environment spanning approximately 1,300 square meters or 14,000 square feet with eight spacious classrooms that foster creativity, engagement, and independence learning, and also creating the perfect setting for our youngest learners. Currently, we are also working with a Japanese entity to create an immersive learning environment for our young beginners. Now, here are some of the preliminary mock-up drawings for the Southside Extended Campus. Well, of course, the interiors will be subject to change as guided by our project engineer and architect. You can see the entrance of the campus and the public hallway, the interior of a classroom setting, and also some common areas for teachers and students to work together. So it's a lovely um, environment for them. Now, interested part is that how you're going to apply and what's the time of the application. So subject to education department's approval, online applications will be open for parents. So at this time, your expression of interest form being provided to the admissions will let you know once we are ready to receive your child's application. Also, the extended campus, when it is almost ready, we will have open house for potential parents to visit. So further details will be provided through your given email account to us. Therefore, may I ex express that your interest form is very important for us to have it. But if you have already filled in this form, there's no need for you to do it again. So I put down the QR code there for your easy um, retrieve of the form and to fill, it, fill up the Google form for us. For the nursery program, it is a year round application if there are still seats available. Now, how about the interview format? Children are invited in a small group and uh, which to be accompanied by one parent or guardian, but preferably uh, we would like a parent to come along with your child. It's gonna be a play-based interview and we like to see how you interact with your child and parents may also have a chance to be interviewed uh, to make sure you're sharing the same vision of the school. Children already accepted in the nursery class will have priority to be promoted to the EY classes for the year, school year of 25-26, also at the same extended campus at the south side. However, this is not a guarantee promotion and will be subject to an internal reassessment for this promotion. Now, I would like to pass the time back to Teresa for the Q&A session. So over to you, Teresa. Thank you. Thank you very much for Emily's sharing. Now we are coming to our Q&A session. Please feel free to type your questions related to the nursery bilingual program, either in English or Chinese. I understand that we may not be able to answer all of your questions. You may always email us for more information. So now Dr. Will, Liv and Emily, uh, you may want to pick up two to three questions to answer. Over to our group. Sure, sure. Um. I just want to say uh, my admissions team, Azurite, has already started answering uh, a lot of the uh, admissions questions. So I would like to pass the time to leave and uh, to Dr. Chen, if they were well, selectively, you can choose your question and feel free to jump in. Okay. Uh, so I'm looking at these questions now. Uh, one of the questions that um, a participant asks is, uh, I assume this is for the nursery program. Will both homeroom teachers be present on English and Chinese days? Uh, if so, are both teachers also bilingual? Uh, we will have the, the Chinese teacher and the English teacher will be specialists in those areas. They would be near, native or near native speakers. So I don't, I don't, uh, they may be bilingual, but my, my, the goal is to have a quality language presence. And they will be there uh, every day and all day with the kids. Okay. Let me look at them. I'm looking through the questions.
There seems to be a lot of admissions okay, thank questions you. here. Uh, another question is that what factors determine... Uh, Leif, can you repeat your answer, please? Uh, no, I was just going to mention there uh, may be worth someone joining from admissions. There's a lot of admissions questions here, and I and then Dr. Chan was just about to answer one of those, so I'll turn it over to Dr. Chan. Uh, thanks. The the question I was going to tackle was what what is the uh, criteria? I guess the assessment uh, for children. The, I think there, what we're looking for is uh, a child's readiness to learn. That's really what we're looking for. Uh, their character we're looking for. Uh, we're looking to make sure that the program that we have to offer uh, can benefit the family and child themselves. The last one I think is very important is to ensure that the family's vision and philosophy of of child rearing and education aligns with what we also have to offer. I think the key for us is to ensure that there's a common alignment of vision and purpose, uh, thus forming a very powerful uh, bond and per partnership for the, for the child themselves. Thanks, Lee. Yeah, I'll just chime in here. There's a, a question about what opportunities do parents have to contribute and participate in the CD and IS community? And I think this is a really important question because when you join uh, CD and IS, you're actually part of a much larger institution. And, um, and there's a lot of benefit that comes with that, both um, as families uh, joining the community and, and students. Uh, when you move up to the Nam Long Shan campus, um, you know, our four-year-olds get to benefit from the swimming pool and the auditorium and the science labs and everything else, and our older students work with them as well. So uh, there are numerous activities, uh, both community-wise and within the classrooms, where parents will have um, chances to participate, engage with um, other parents, to learn about the program that we have here at CDNIS. We run a variety of parent workshops throughout the year and, um, and also to contribute to larger school community events like our uh, carnival, which will be coming up in November and uh, as an example. So thank you for that question. Thanks, Leif. Let me, let me try to tackle another question here. Uh, one of the questions asked is, do we accept children, uh, nursery children, born in early September, or are you very strict with the cutoff date of 31st August? For the nursery program, the EDD requires that the child uh, reaches the age of two before they can enter. And as Ms. Pong uh, mentioned, the application process is, is year round. So that means children can become uh, two years old on October 1st. And if there's space available, they can enter at that time. So it's really age dependent. Uh, this is the key uh, cutoff. For EY1, it's a little bit different. EY1, they need to be uh, three years old by the time they start school. And so there's a little bit different criteria. Uh, I can answer a question here. With the usual priority factors, siblings, Canadian citizens, et cetera, apply for the nursery applications. Uh, yes, uh, I would suggest you to go to our website on the admissions page, and there is a stage one and stage two factors, uh, how we're going to accept and on what condition we give priority. So Canadian is a factor, but then um, I can say we have lots of applicants that are Canadians as well. However, non-Canadians are good families as well. So for the admission side, we have to play fair to everybody and then we'll see. Uh, I would say siblings uh, has the strongest factor for now. And then uh, we'll see how we're going to balance the numbers and all different kinds of factors for, for, for acceptance. Thank Let you, me Ms. try oh, to... Oh, no. uh, Let me try to answer uh, two other questions here. Uh, a common question I see in the in the uh, in the stream is will there be school bus arrangements for nursery? Uh, we have not made the definitive decision yet. At this point, we are negotiating with the the site to see if there's even a safe uh, drop off point 
for children. So we are we are not yet determined at that uh, at, uh, regarding the bus services right now. Uh, while the the MTR is right on that same side, uh, we're leaning towards having people encouraging people to take public transportation if it's, if it's available uh, to them. This is probably the the easiest and safest way and the less congested way to get there. The other one that is often asked is the uh, the admissions fee, uh, the, the fees. And at this point, we're, we are not sure, we don't know yet. We are in negotiation with an application process with the education department. Uh, and we're, uh, again, this is in process and thus they need to uh, approve all fee structures. And at this point, we, we have not uh, arrived to that con conclusion yet or confirmation yet. So that will come as the license progresses, license process progresses, and we will probably know that uh, closer to the, the beginning of the calendar year. Um, another question raised is that, uh, in what language is the interview assessment in? Um, the parents actually for nursery, uh, there's not much we can see from the little ones. Uh, in fact, I'm more inclined to see on the interview part with the parents. Um, the parents can talk to us in either English or Chinese, or not, I mean, in Mandarin, um, that is acceptable. We had a question about the rollout and I, I talked about the rollout up until grade five. And that the question was, uh, will the bilingual program extend all the way up to grade 12? And at the moment, uh, no, uh, there's no plan to roll the bilingual program past the lower school. Uh, the idea is to build that strong foundation of a, a bilingual education when they're younger. And then once they enter into our transition years and the subjects become uh, taught by subject specialists, that it will be an English uh, language program with Chinese uh, being taught as one of the subjects and they would be streamed into their appropriate level. Of course, they can continue with the bilingual diploma um, at our grades 11 and 12 and graduate with that bilingual diploma as well. Uh, one question that I just noticed, uh, actually several people have asked this, is uh, does the child need to be potty trained before joining the, the nursery two-year old program? The answer is no, they don't need to. We believe that this is developmental and our, uh, as the program itself is about helping children grow, develop uh, in all different domains of their lives, this is the natural process. So we like to take advantage, it sounds kind of silly perhaps, but we like to take advantage of even uh, toileting skills be a everyday uh, process of learning for them in both languages. So that's our goal. No, they do not need to be potty trained. Thank you very much, everyone. So once again, thank you for attending the webinar and we are looking forward to meeting you again in the near future. Stay tuned for our nursery open houses and other admissions activities. Do feel free to contact us if further information or assistance is needed. Bye for now um, and have a restful weekend. Thank you, bye-bye.